Good morning, and welcome to the regular meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for Tuesday, April 6, 2021. Council will continue to meet virtually until further notice. All meetings will be cablecast on the city's channel and live streamed on the city channel, Pittsburgh YouTube channel. Will the clerk please take the roll? Mr. Coghill. Here. Ms. Gross. Here. Mr. Krause. Mr. Lavelle. Here. Mr. O'Connor. Here. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Wilson. Here. Mrs. Kelsmith. Reverend Burgess, President Pro Tem. Reverend Burgess. Yeah. 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 Staff members present. Thank you. Um, as we um, or at our remote locations, um, can we either stand or put your hand on your heart or think about the flag as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, and now a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Our next order of business is proclamations. I do not see um, any to be read into the record. And so if not, that takes us to public comment. I would like to remind everyone that the rules of council state that comments are limited to matters of concern, official action or deliberation, which are or may be before council. Profanity will not be permitted. Um, first speaker we have, um, and, and again, please state your name and neighborhood for the record. You'll have three minutes in which to speak. The first person that I see is Todd Wagner. Todd, are you with us? Todd Wagner? Seeing no Todd Wagner, our next speaker is Kim Wilkes. Kim, are you with us? Our second speaker is Kim Wilkes. Kim, are you with us? All right. Um, our third speaker listed is Christopher George. Christopher, are you with us? Yep, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. If you would start off with your name and neighborhood, you have three minutes. All right, thank you. Chris George, District 8. I was uh, commenting on the eviction moratorium ongoing discussion. Um, I am concerned about council looking at um, limiting the legislation to not include people on month to month or expiring leases. Um, I've, it's hard to get exact data, but I have an air table where a, a database where we've tried to track um, every eviction case in Allegheny County. And there are some where people put comments. Um, I do believe a majority of all cases uh, facing eviction right now are month to month or expired leases, uh, which is not surprising 13 months into a pandemic and there's always a certain percentage of leases that are month to month to begin with. So I really believe this could literally more than cut in half the effectiveness of the eviction moratorium in addition to reducing the fine. Um, I, I don't understand when the law the, the bill that you passed has severability in it. And when the state Supreme Court has a long history of case law upholding the concept of severability, why the council would unilaterally weaken the legislation out of a fear of a court outcome. I, I know council usually doesn't comment back to folks on public comment. So I would love if somebody could get back to me explaining the legal concept of why uh, you would want to do this. Um, the data I found from the Pittsburgh Foundation was that tenants only win 1.5% of eviction cases, landlords win 85%. I'm worried that's where folks who would not be covered would be heading. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to say, I think 
it's unfortunate it's fallen to your level, but it has. You know, Governor Wolf has let the state eviction moratorium, which was stronger than the CDC, expire. I've never been able to get Rich Fitzgerald to respond to doing a countywide eviction moratorium. Um, he's not been accessible on the issue at all. So I hope City Council um, looks at upholding the legislation that you pass nine nothing, um, strong legislation, and doesn't more than cut it in half. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Shaman Pomai. Shaman Pomai, are you with us today? Yes, greetings. Can you hear me? Yes. Greetings. So my title is Shaman Pomai Chakmam Yahalahi of the Iroquois Confederacy of Aborigine American People. In the so-called territory, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we call the Der Delaware Territory. The following municipal citizens have all violated their oath of office acting in ultraviolet against the United States constitutions towards our people. Attorney Dev David Elwood, Citizens Police Review Board and the entire board. Aaron Bruni of the Municipal Investigations Office and Detective Evanansky and their attorney. Pittsburgh Police Officer C. Massesso, badge number 4322 and Pittsburgh Police Sergeant C. Nydick, badge 4029. There is a video of Pittsburgh police officers violating our constitutionally protected rights, acting and admitting in the color of law and forced assimilation, which is a crime under the constitution. The Office of Municipal Investigations and the Pittsburgh Citizens Police Review Board, subsequent acts of genocide and forced assimilation. These acts of genocide and war will not stand. These officials have violated their oath of office and waived their qualified immunity by conspiring to force, assimilate, and enforce genocide upon our peoples. The city of Pittsburgh and city council, by lack of your constitutional duties to uphold, protect, and defend the constitution first, shows no sincerity to end these colonization tactics of forced assimilation. It is apparent that you, you continue to further perpetuate colonizing, thieving, and killing our people, such as the genocidal behaviors of certain people's ancestors, which is a treasonous act of war. We have been extremely patient and as courteous as possible, considering it is our rights that are being violated. Our rights are acknowledged both constitutionally and internationally protected, yet the city of Pittsburgh continues to support and defend these municipal citizens in their actions of ultraviolet, violating our rights and your oath in a conspiracy to protect and cover up the actions of the Pittsburgh Police Department. If you do not step up to respond and resolve this issue with our Grand Inca and Inca of our, and our members of the Iroquois Confederacy of Aborigine American people and excluding Indians not tax, you will have solidified your position. And we will not stop until we receive the jurisdictional justice promised to us in the constitution under your laws and our many treaties. We will not go away, nor will we stop asserting our Aborigine rights. The Delaware Treaty, the Un United States Constitution, House Congress Resolutions 331, the American Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, and many other bodies of law support us. We have sent correspondents requesting a clear, transparent response of the unlawful decisions to failing to hold the police accountable and these other offices accountable. Her, the investigations prove that there is no transparency and the decision was made according to them by the Home Rule Charter which in the very beginning of that states that you must uphold the constitution and honor our government to government relationship clearly defined in the constitution is well stated. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Itahana Hal Makina. In la kesh greetings, peace, light, and love to each and every city council member. My title is Ikahana Hal Makina. I am the Grand Inca of the Iroquois Confederacy of Aborigine American People. It is our right to not to be forced, forcibly assimilated into a system that we do not belong. We are more present than your citizens on this line, speaking our truth. And I just wonder, what will it take to reestablish our discussion that we were having previously about our rights, about our liberties. We have the right to be safe and secure in our own land. 
our people as a community, as a nation, must not be exposed to violence. We must not be forcibly assimilated into your system. What do I mean by being forcibly assimilated? When you assume that we are your citizens, when we are treated like we are your citizens. We are not your citizens. We are not property. We are not to be handled. We are not to be censured. We are not to be enumerated. As set forth in the Constitution, in Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3, we have the right to preserve our culture, our customs, our traditions without outside influence. We are not to be discriminated against. America is our home. And you do not have the right to force titles upon us. Our people may not be removed or relocated by force from our land, and it still continues today. It's called gentrification. Our land is being developed without our free, prior, and informed consent. We must be engaged in these processes. We are asking for accountability. Accountability must take place. We must take steps to right the wrongs. Be a pioneer, city council member. Lead the way to justice. Carry the torch for justice and accountability. We have very clear ask is that legislation be written to protect us from forced assimilation, to ensure that our government-to-government -government relationship stays intact as set forth in House Congress Resolution 331 in the 100th Congress Second Session. I advise you all to read it. For that is the precedent that we stand on. The Constitution protects us, Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3 of the Constitution, and excluding Indians not taxed. If you're wondering about the term Indian, because we don't really refer to ourselves as Indian, it tells you in Bouvier's Dictionary, 1856, the term Indian is loosely used to describe the Aboriginal of America. And with that being said, if law is what governs all affairs, then law must be applied to our ask, our very clear ask demands of you to do the right thing by us. Thank you very much. Now that takes us back. Is Todd Wagner, are you here? You were the first person on the list for speaker. Are you here today? No. How about Kim Wilkes? Are you here today? Having called those people multiple times, we will assume um, that there are no more public speakers. That takes us to the next order of business, which would be presentation of papers. Um, it starts with uh, Councilman Coghill on behalf of myself, Chair of Urban Recreation. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill number 1373, resolution authorizing the mayor, the manager of the Office of Community Health and Safety and the director of the Department of Public Safety to enter into an agreement with Primary Care and, e and MEE Productions for the purpose of minting grants for community-based organization and trusted community identified leaders who participate in the Allegheny County Health Department and Department of Human Services COVID-19 Awareness Campaign for ethnic and minority communities in an amount not to exceed $100,000 chargeable to and payable from the Stop the Violence Trust Fund. Thank you very much. Councilman Carl Kiel, Chair of Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilman Carl Kiel presents Bill number 1365, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development's multi-module transportation program for the design and construction of street and sidewalk infrastructure and pedestrian plaza space at and near the intersection of Beachview Avenue and Broadway Avenue and further providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $600,000. Bill number 1366, 
resolution further amending it amendment resolution number 830 of 2018 entitled resolution providing for an agreement allowing the mayor and director of the department of mobility and infrastructure on behalf of the city to enter into an agreement to complete engineering design for a new multi-module connection of hazelwood greenfield and four mile run with oakland which will support green infrastructure ensure safe travel increase travel options between these neighborhoods, protect local neighborhoods and increase connectivity consistent with the concept design developed through the 2018 public process and further providing for payment of costs not to exceed $1,346,644.10 to authorize a supplemental agreement with Michael Baker for an increase to the scope of work on the Mon Oakland Mobility Corridor project and to account for the new increased project costs not to exceed $2,031,904.81 and increase of $396,223.31 from the previous supplement. Bill number 1367 ordinance extinguishing an easement in 20 foot strip of real property adjacent to the easterly side of 21st street, 60 feet in width between Smallman Street and railroad in the second ward of the city. Thank you very much. That takes us to Councilman Gross, Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. Thank you, uh, Councilman. Thank you. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill number 1368, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official school facilities plan for proposed land development located at the corner of Perrion and Rutland Street, including those parcels identified on the attached Exhibit B located in the city. Bill number 1369, resolution providing for the issuance of a warrant in favor of Pittsburgh mailing in the amount of $7,175 for open enrollment printing service due to print shop closure during the pandemic. That's, um, that, that particular bill is under Councilman Krause's bill. It sure uh, it is. Sure. That's, that's why I was flipping the paper back. I'm like, I think I'm in the wrong committee. But yeah, yeah. That's okay. The Chair of Human Resources, Mr. Krause has a waiver rule. Uh, I I do, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I do have a waiver of Rule 8 uh, so that this bill 1369 may appear on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. Second. 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 Thank you. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Close his name. Thank you very much. The bill will appear on tomorrow's agenda. That takes us to Councilman Lavelle, Chair of Finance and Law. President. Thank you. Councilman Laville presents bill number 1317, resolution amending resolution number 565, effective November 3rd, 2020, entitled Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and Directors of the Department of Finance and Public Works to execute an agreement of sale in all related documents necessary to effect the purchase by the city of 5164 Broad Street, the 10th Ward and to accept a deed for the property and further authorizing the expenditure of funds for the purchase, closings, and other associated auxiliary costs not to exceed $10,000, and further authorizing the acceptance of that lot and dedicating that lot and an adjacent city-owned lot together as the Nelson Mandela Peace Park to clarify the cost of the purchasing said property and other associated auxiliary costs. Thank you very much. Councilman O'Connor, Chair of Public Safety Services. No new papers. Councilwoman Strasberger, Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. No new papers, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Councilman Wilson, Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you very much. On behalf of Councilwoman Kel Smith, we have a few things. We have a communication. Um, acting pay approval, if you read, is, is um, um, Madam Clerk? Council President Kel Smith presents Bill number 1371, 
Communication from Kevin Fallis, Director of the Office of Medicine and Budget, submitting acting pay approval on behalf of the Department of Public Safety for, for Kara Cruz for the acting plate policy revised in June of 2018. Bill number 1372. Petition from the residents of the city requesting a public hearing before city council relative to the crisis of forced mass displacement of black Pittsburghers and the reasons for this displacement. The petition is valid in accordance with the home rule charter. Well, I think for the first one, we need a, a motion to re receive and file. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Closers nay. For the second one, um, then I, I, I need a motion to hold for a cable cast uh, public hearing. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers nay. Brenda, just for my own edification, who is the, um, the petitioner? Is there a, 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 a lead petitioner? Uh, my memory served me correct. I think that's a Rodney Taylor. Randall Taylor. Randall. Oh, mm -hmm. Randall, Taylor. Mm -hmm. Randall Taylor. All right. Lead petitioner. Thanks, Kim. Thank you very much. Um, um, now we are ready to move to uh, unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business mm -hmm. before council? Seeing none, the next order of business is report of committee for final action. Starting with Councilman R. Daniel Lavelle, Committee on Finance and Law. Mr. President. Thank you. Councilman Lavelle presents Bill number 1360, report of the Committee on Finance and Law for March 31st, 2021, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1276, resolution providing for the issuance of a warrant in the total sum of $55,000 in favor of Will L. and Todd J. Hollis as final settlement of all claims, costs, and fees related to this plaintiff only in the police-related action filed in the U.S. District Court, which has been pending in multiple stages of litigation since 2015. Bill number 1277, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Joanne Duclar and her attorney, Bernard C. Caputo, in the amount of $12,500 in full and final settlement of litigation in the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County. Bill number 1278, Resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of Chris Boyle Law Enforcement Consulting LLC for professional consulting services in connection with litigation for an amount not to exceed $13,000. Bill number 1305, resolution authorizing the mayor and the city solicitor to enter into a professional services agreement with Pedro Gallo, Gordon Alfano, Vosick, and Rasputin LLC for professional legal services in connection with civil rights litigation for an amount not to exceed $85,000. Bill number 1333, resolution providing for a professional services agreement or existing agreements for consulting services, but not limited to auditing, accounting, and technical services for the city controller's office at a cost not to exceed $150,000. Bill number 1352, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Office of Management and Budget on behalf of the city to enter into a no cost professional services agreement to work with experts from the Harvard University Government Performance Lab to create templates, contract language, and key performance indicators for outcomes based procurements. All right, you've heard the reading title of the bill. Is there any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. When their name is called, those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. <clears throat> aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. LaValle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith? Aye. Reverend Burgess, President Pro Tem. Aye. 
Ayes nine, no zero. The bill having received a legally current number of votes is passed. We are joined by Madam President. Do you want me to turn, you want to take over from here? Or do you want me to- No, continue? you're doing great. Keep going, thanks. Um, then we go to uh, Councilman Anthony Caulkill, Committee on Public Works. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Yep. Madam, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Councilman Coghill presents Bill Number 1361, Report of the Committee on Public Works for March 31st, 2021, with an affirmative recommendation, Bill Number 482, Resolution Granting Unto 1505 East Carson Street, their successors, and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense a new projecting sign at 1505 East Carson Street in the 17th Ward, 3rd Council District. Bill number 1314, resolution granting unto Northside Common Ministries, Inc., their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense an existing set of entry steps and canopies at 1601 Brighton Road, 25th Ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 1315, resolution granting unto Frick Lenders Associates, LP, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a project and blade sign at 437 Grant Street, 2nd Ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 1316, resolution granting unto 601 Grant Street Investment LP. Their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a project and blade sign at 601 Grant Street, 2nd Ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 1317, resolution granting unto Nicholas, Nicholas, and Diane Landis, their successors, and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense to install a new awning at 26 Market Square, 1st Ward, 6th Council District. Bill number 1318, Resolution granting unto Solara Ventures 7, LLC, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense to install tree pits at 2635 Penn Avenue in the second ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 1319, resolution granting unto Terminal Leasing Inc., their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct maintain and use of their own cost and expense, a new concrete and wood cafe deck, two standard tree pits, two new suspended steel canopies along 24th Street at 2400 Smallman Street, 2nd Ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 1320, resolution authorizing acceptance by the city of the dedication of Zuzu Circle originally, originally recorded as Bailey Park Avenue in the Bailey Park plan of lots situated in the 18th Ward, 3rd Council District. Bill number 1321, resolution granting unto Oshai Dubori Inc., their successors, and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, a small blade sign that will project into the right of way at 5227 Butler Street, 10th Ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 1322, resolution granting unto Quality Managed Services, LLC, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, an existing set of entry steps at 5416 Butler Street, 10th Ward, 7th Council District. Bill number 1323, resolution granting unto the Pittsburgh Trust for Cultural Resources, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, an existing fire ex escape at 937 Liberty Avenue, Second Ward, Sixth Council District. Bill number 1324, resolution granting unto Extra Space East One LLC, their successors and assigns the privilege and license to construct, maintain, and use at their own cost and expense, 
to install seven new entrance canopies at 7535 Penn Avenue, 14th Ward, 9th Council District, Bill number 1326. Resolution providing for a reimbursement agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for costs associated with the preliminary engineering phase of the Larima Avenue Bridge Project and providing for the payment of municipal incurred costs not to exceed $731,500 and, and the municipal share of Commonwealth incurred costs not to exceed $1,500. Bill number 1328, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Public Works to enter on behalf of the city into an energy services agreement with Energy Center Pittsburgh LLC for the supply of steam to the city county building with the possibility of hot and or chilled water in the future. You've heard the reading and title of this long series of bills. Is there a discussion on any of the bills? I uh, see none. The bill is ready for it's now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. 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 Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Cross. Aye. Mr. Cross. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Cal Smith. Aye. Reverend Burgess, President Pro Tem. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. The bills haven't received the legally required number, required number of votes is finally passed. That takes us to Councilman Bobby Wilson, Committee on Land Use and Economic Development. Mr. President. Thank you. Councilman Wilson presents Bill number 1362, Report of the Committee on Land Use and Economic Development for March 31st, 2021, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1334, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and Director of City Planning to enter into a Memorandum of Understanding and or an amended Memorandum of Understanding with the Natural Resource Defense Council in support of the, the American Cities Climate Challenge, the MOU should be at no cost to the city. Bill number 1359, ordinance amending Title VII business licensing, Article 10, rental of residential housing, Chapter 782, temporary eviction regulation for disease prevention and control due to COVID-19 to strengthen its policy directives through certain technical and substantive revisions. Thank you very much. You've heard the reading title of the bill. Is there any discussion on the bill? Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Gross. Thank you. I have um, to implore council members one more time. Uh, we all received emails from the law department late last night and again this morning. And so once again, there are various attachments. Um, and laws suggesting basically technical amendments compared to what we did last week. These are just technical amendments and I can summarize them. But what I did was I took, I separated out their revised document and I emailed to you under separate cover because we're required to have especially written amendments on final vote. Um, so you should be able to see those in green highlighted if you're able to open the document that was sent under um, an email under from my email address. Um, if, if members want, I could also share them on the screen if you're kind of confused by which emails you've gotten because I've got it up on my, on my screen, but just let me know. Um, mainly, there was a section added last Wednesday that is down at the nearly the bottom of the document that is um, 782.5. Oh, one D is in dog D violations of this chapter shall be enforced may be enforced by any city department bureau or enforcement officer. If so, um, de as designated by the mayor is what it said last Wednesday, the as is stricken and replaced by if so designated by the mayor. And then there's um, 
in addition to any city department bureau or enforcement officer, which was in last Wednesday's version, the law de department has suggested adding or the Pittsburgh Commission on Human Relations, comma. And so I find that a reasonable um, addition. Um, there's also um, two word changes in sections B1 and two, which just is cause the eviction or dispossession is stricken out and replaced with pursues the eviction or dispossession in both sections. And those are really the only changes. And again, these are just kind of legal languages um, changes. I do wanna also, if I may, take a moment to just address some of the concerns from the public. And I just wanna assure people that we did many, many, many hours of meetings mm -hmm. of trying, to craft, trying to craft legislation that is both enforceable and can be defended in court since January. Right, so I had the initial language that I um, emailed members about and talked to um, President Smith about in the middle of January. Um, and law has advised us on this course with this, again, temporary ordinance. Um, we hear a lot of concern from public comment and from emails to our offices that the language still has not been enforced. Uh, so what we faced in voting for amendments last Wednesday and again, for these technical amendments today, I hope you'll support, is to find something that is enforceable. Uh, we're trying to get to enforcement so that we can try to help this eviction rate from going down. Um, so I, I, I'm supportive of these changes today. I hope you will be as well. And I hope that we do see um, you know, some level of enforcement. And if it is, um, you know, needs more changes. I hope you will also entertain um, a few, any future discussion that we may have in, in order to try to make um, some positive effect. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chair, thank you. So do you have a motion to, is there a, is there a I didn't motion? actually technically motion to amend, thank you. Motion to amend by substitution because what you have in front of you is a full text. Yes, second. second with very brief discussion. Ms. Cross. Thanks, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I have uh, I've read through the amendments. They are just technical in nature. I believe they further help to refine our ability to defend should it be challenged. Uh, I am in full support. I ask members if you would please be in support as well. Uh, the, 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 the mission before us is to be able to provide uh, for the prevention of um, terminate or of um, eviction uh, and uh, and keeping uh, the ordinance from being challenged gives us the power to enact, which then gives us the power to enforce. So I uh, appreciate the work, thank you. And uh, I'm happy to support on my second and ask members if you would please support as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other members? Seeing no other members will vote first on the motion to amend. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed is nay. The bill has been amended by substitution. Is there now any discussion on the amended bill? Seeing none, um, the bill um, is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote bill. aye when their name is called. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Caldhill. Aye. Mr. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Laval. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Cal Smith. Aye. Reverend Burgess, President Pro Tem. Aye. Zero. The bill mm -hmm. received the legally required numbers of votes is finally passed. That takes us to Councilwoman Erica Strasberger, Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilwoman Strasberger presents Bill Number 1363, Report of the Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Assets Management for March 31st, within affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1338, resolution authorizing the director of the Department of Innovation and Performance on behalf of the city to enter into an agreement 
with certain individuals in conjunction with the Department of Innovation and Performance Pro-Code-O program that will provide additional support for the Innovation and Performance Initiative at no cost to the city, Bill number 1353. Resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Innovation and Performance on behalf of the city to enter into a no cost professional services agreement to work with experts from the John Hopkins University Center for Government Excellence to elevate data governance practice across the city. Thank you very much. You've heard the reading and title of the bill. Is there any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their name is called. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk, please call the list. Mr. Coghill. Aye. aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Mr. Laval. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Reverend Burgess Chair. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. The bill having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. That takes us to Councilwoman Deborah Gross, Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1364, Report of the Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs for March 31st, 2021, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1329, Resolution Adopting Plan Revision to the City of Pittsburgh's Official Floor Facilities Plan for the 3500 Forbes Avenue. Bill number 1330, ordinance authorizing the city to enter into an intergovernmental corporation agreement with the Commonwealth Department of Human Services with regard to Medicaid reimbursement services for a term of three years plus one possible two year extension at the party's usual option. The agreement shall result in net revenue for the city, but will require upfront expenses in an amount not to exceed $1,363,810 annually for a total amount not to exceed $6,819,050. Thank you very much. You've heard the reading and title of the bill. Is there any discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the bill is ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their name is called. Those opposed will vote no. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Coghill. Aye. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Aye. Mr. Krause. Aye. Aye. Mr. Laval. Aye. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Kell Smith. Aye. Reverend Burgess Chair. Aye. Aye. Nine, no, zero. Thank you very much. The bill having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. I believe that then um, exhaust our agenda. I do want to mention some meeting announcements. Mm -hmm. This afternoon at 1.30, council will hold an executive session on, uh, on bill 1331 as it relates to the issue of a warrant. A council, of course, will meet tomorrow, Wednesday, April 7th, uh, for the standing committee meeting at 10 a.m. To register, please fill out the sign up form on the council meeting webpage by 9 a.m. Wednesday morning. You may also register by calling the city clerk's office at 412 255 2138 by the registration deadline. Members of council, do you have anything in motions and resolutions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Chair? Mr. Cross? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I have the unfortunate task of informing the council of a um, rather sick, sickening um, a racist attack at um, the concession stand at Corey Field yesterday. Uh, the Bears uh, sports team, uh, which is uh, completely um, 
housed, supported, and funded through community effort um, was attacked. Um, and many of you probably are aware already um, of what has happened. It's, it's been out there. Um, I was up on site yesterday. I was able to see uh, the, the sickening racist graffiti that was spray painted all over the building. We worked closely with leadership from the Bears uh, yesterday. I reached out to uh, Mayor Peduto immediately. Uh, the mayor was on it within uh, seconds, uh, releasing a statement to counter um, uh, this sickening act of vandalism. Uh, reached out with, um, to uh, Chief of Staff Gilman as well had immediate support from all uh, public uh, offices, from law enforcement, from uh, Detective Sloan of our graffiti task force, uh, our local uh, commander, as well as uh, Chris Hornstein, public works acting director, uh, to immediately uh, remove the graffiti um, and to uh, provide for restitution. So um, the, the the work that was done on the concession stand was completely done at the cost of leadership of the Bears. They funded it in its entirety. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor has uh, stated publicly that we will incur the cost to uh, uh, replace. Uh, we'll work with the uh, Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council to bring the artists back to restore the murals that were destroyed on the building. Uh, Public Works will provide for a repainting of the building uh, itself. Graffiti has been removed uh, just quickly. It was painted over um, to get it off the building, uh, but there's a complete restoration uh, uh, scheduled for the building. We're working with all city agencies. Uh, Lindsay Powell, I wanna thank her as well too. Um, and uh, we, not we, uh, the uh, South Pittsburgh Coalition of Peace is holding a uh, peace rally uh, at noon today. I, I'll be there, the mayor will be in attendance and a number of community members are going to be in attendance uh, and a number of uh, different uh, leadership from across South Pittsburgh will be there. So uh, I, you know, I just, um, you know, I just, I just ask for an end to, um, to the, the senselessness of, uh, of hatred um, and racism. The, anyone who's familiar with the Bears, they, you know, they do it um, out of a, um, a space of love. Uh, they help black, white, brown children from across the city just to, to engage in sports at Quarry Field. They do the work of God. They're doing God's work. Uh, and, and to see them so senselessly and uh, maliciously vandalized um, hurts, uh, hurts me and hurts us uh, to the very core. So um, just, I wanted, in case you weren't aware, to make you aware uh, that, it, that this, um, this did happen and uh, uh, to ask for your, um, you know, your thoughts and your consideration and uh, as, as we continue down the path of uh, putting an end to this, uh, the sickening violence of racism. So thank you. And Mr. Chair, thank you for allowing me the time. Thank you very much. Anyone else? So um, I will ask uh, the president uh, the public hearing that um, has been scheduled. I'll work with the president and ask if she perhaps I don't know if she would like me to chair or not, but I, I do want to say something because um, I have had the privilege of serving, as you know, uh, on the Housing Authority uh, for many years and for many years as its chair and overseeing its modernization. Um, the Housing Authority has taken barrack style housing that was with no defendable space that were a uh, field, they were dangerous um, and field, um, unfortunately, with lots of uh, criminal activity. Um, the Housing Authority has, uh, across the city, modernized much of its properties, right? It has transformed them from communities of concentrated, isolated poverty into new, beautiful, mixed income neighborhoods. Um, in doing so, in order to make the space defendable, 
so that you do not have uh, shared hallways where a person can walk right into their front door and, and, and be protected and not have to go through common places. Uh, to do a lot of that work, um, this footprint had to be reduced so that the uh, size of the apartment units are larger and, and better with yards and things. But because we're not going, we're going um, horizontal, not vertical, um, the number of units, of course, were reversed, were, were reduced. Um, and we changed it from being all affordable to mixed income so that you did not have just all poor people in one place, that you had people of various levels um, so that the communities would look more like Pittsburgh. Um, the premise of the public hearing is absolutely false. And I will debate that. I am willing to debate that, not at, just at the public hearing, but anywhere, anytime. There are books that document this. Um, Homewood, for example, I grew up there. I've lived there all my life. In 1970, <laughs> Homewood had 20,000 people. By 1980, it had 15,000 people. By 2000, it had 9,000 people. And now Homewood has under 6,000 people. Close to 60% of the land is abandoned and vacant and not one person in Homewood, not one person in Larmer, not one person in Lincoln Lemington, not one person of East Hills moved out because of gentrification. They all chose to leave. They chose to leave because of crime. They chose to leave because of blight. They were not priced out. They were not moved out. They were not forced out. The only place that we've actually seen, and there are books that say this, uh, uh, um, the only place we've actually seen uh, large-scale gentrification in the city is actually Lawrenceville. There is no other place in the city where we've actually seen large-scale gentrification. That is that even the place that critics use, and I do, if you've been moved out and what happened to Penn Plaza it was awful, and I feel for them, right? But if you actually look at the numbers, because even though um, there has been some displacement before I was on council in East Liberty, there were new units built and uh, around East Liberty. And the places where the modern um, market rate housing was built was not in previously occupied space. Bakery Square Apartments were on a vacant, were in school. They weren't built, they did not take out existing mm -hmm. homeowners. Um, um, and so, and, and that's true with some of the other new apartments in East Liberty. And so this myth, I know it plays well politically, but it's not factually true. Yes, people have left, black people have left the city. They have left the city for a variety of reasons. Some because of not being able to find enough affordable housing. Others have left because they did not like the product available to them. And that they by choice moved to Penn Hills and Moroville my parents in around 72, 73, seriously considered moving from Homewood to Penn Hills. You know, I went uh, house shopping with them because at that time, if you were a working class family and you were in Homewood and you had the opportunity to leave, you did leave. And so um, this mayor, this administration, uh, council, this council, as a city, we have, we have, you know, with the Housing Opportunity Fund, um, with the Choice Neighborhood Grants, we have done just, um, I think, a significant job uh, as best as we can of uh, finding new housing, modernizing, uh, dilapidated, dangerous housing. Um, but this myth that there was this large, forcible uh, gentrification effort going on in Pittsburgh is not true. And even though I, I talked about my district, I sure, I'm sure Councilman Lavelle can chime in. The same thing is true in the Hill District, right? They weren't, gen people who left the Hill did not leave because they were being gentrified. They left because they wanted to leave. Same thing with Bell Suver, same thing with um, almost every black community in the city of Pittsburgh. It has shrunk and most of it has shrunk by choice. And so I just wanna be very clear, even as we have this public hearing, um, because you're gonna, you know, they wanna use this venue um, to pursue a political and a, a, fict, a fictitious narrative because of their own, um, their own, for their own benefit. And from the very beginning and all through this process, I will counter it 
with facts instead of um, speculation. Anyone else? Yeah, Reverend Burgess. Cousin Lavelle. Yeah, just to your point about mixed income housing, um, there was actually an article in the Post Gazette maybe two days ago, I believe, about what's called now called Sandstone Quarry, um, which was a part of Allegheny dwelling mm -hmm. um, that was demolished and rebuilt. And the ribbon cutting was in 2019, I believe. And it was in this section of the Post Gazette talk about that's called living here, where they often will advertise homes for sale. Um, but in the article, they talked about how you now have public housing residents living directly next door to doctors who go to work at Allegheny General Hospital. So the myth that mixed income housing is not working in our city is indeed a myth. And it's something we need to continue to work on and, and, and press forward with. Um, but if anyone did not see the article, I just wanted to raise it um, because it's a, it's a shining example of what the housing authority has done right and what we've collectively been able to produce. Thank you very much. Um, anything else from any other members? If not, I think we were all here today, so I need a motion to approve the minutes and adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Aye.